What's up everybody, it's Stephen Williams, founder and president of the creditrepairshop.com and in this video I'm going to talk about 1099C debt cancellation. It's not going to be a long video, but it's going to be straight to the point. You need to see this. One of my clients just got one. Other clients are reporting that they're getting them also. This is what I call a tax refund uh, ruin day. Uh, you know, this is, can ruin someone's tax uh, return if they were expecting to get money back due to these types of uh, 1099c reporting to the IRS but I'm about to tell you what you can do about it I'm gonna show you the documents but first what I want to do is to show you the amounts that was put in this 1099c from one of my clients and before we get started please like the videos you know I give you straight up content real deal content this is real information from clients and also just in case you may not understand what this means this means that if with the amount that I'm going to show you here on this 1099c form that was forgiven debt cancellation debt forgiven 100% my company was able to keep this collector off of the back of the client. So that right there is just like added value when you look at what we were able to do for this client. Now I'm about to, uh, I'm going to move in close so you can see the amount. And I put black boxes to cover up the client. We don't want to, um, you know, tell people who they are. But you can see 12-31-2019, this was recently, the amount of the debt that was discharged was $19,414.69. And look at this interest rate that they threw on top of there. That was probably interest over the period of time that they were trying to collect it. Something else that I want you to pay attention to is I want you to pay attention to this G right here. You see this identifiable event code G. When you get your forms, I want you to pay attention to that because if they don't put that on there, uh, you don't know what classification they've uh, posted your 1099C in. It needs to be code G. And now let's go up here to see what G stands for. Look at this right here, G. Decision or policy to discontinue collection. That means that they've given up all ability to be able to collect this debt in the future so they cannot come after you after they've done that at all they cannot come after you they cannot sell it they cannot do anything uh to come after you for this they consider this a, a discon discontinue uh, ability to collect the debt but what they've done by using this 1099C is they're going to inform the IRS to say that this is money in your pocket, that they want them to consider it as income so they can get a 100% write-off on the debt. Now, let's go to the other one that I have here before we move forward. You can see right here, uh, 7-19-2019. Uh, they wrote off this and they did not even put an interest amount on there and you can see right here when they made the decision uh, in July they did not even notify us that they were doing this so some of the times they could do this and they've sold the debt to another collector and they're trying to come after uh, you for the money and they've already um, did a cancellation of the debt that's why you always have to find out when you do a debt validation you need to look at your credit reports because it'll usually state it there if it's been a canceled debt because they've moved it into another uh, department in their accounting division to say that these are now canceled and we're not going to try to collect or do anything to come after people for that money and even debt collectors can even do that so they can get a maximum maximum amount of a write-off. So even if it's with a debt collector that purchased the debt, they're going to try to write off the full amount, which what you can actually do if you uh, want to go through it, you can make sure of the amount that they purchased the debt for because that's really the legal amount that they can write off on the discharge. But I'm going to show you what you can do even if you don't go through that process because that's going to be a process that may may take you uh, doing a lot of legal work to get it. 
but here is what you can do to get it waived. So now let's move over to the next step here. And I'm going to pause the video so we can widen the screen. So now let's get right to it. Look at this publication form here. Publication 4681 2019. It's an insolvency worksheet. I'm not going to bore you with what all it entails, but basically what this allows you to do, which most people that are in trouble with their finances or their debt is that they're considered insolvent. So basically in layman ter layman's term, what this means is that at the time that you went through this collection or this debt, what amount of money did you have in the bank? What assets did you have? Uh, was there anything of value that they would be able to put towards uh, saying that you could have potentially paid that debt. That's what it's going to basically come down to. Most people, most of you, 99.999% of you will fall into this category of insolvency. Now, what you, what you need to do is you need to just, there, there, there's a, um, worksheet that you would go through. You need to read it. Uh, you know, you need to read it so you can see where you qualify, but, this here is this publication 4681 depending on what type of debt you had you have there they have it for debts from foreclosures repossessions all types of stuff individual uh not business because business is going to have a whole different categorization but you can do and student loans you could look here student loans inheritance all types of stuff that you would be able to work off of this insolvency worksheet and basically what they're going to do is they're going to look at your liabilities they're going to look at your assets and then they're going to do a calculation so even though uh the debt that was written off like we had here let's go back to it um to the bigger one uh we have here on the bigger one was 19,000 but let's just say that after everything was well plus the interest uh but let's just say with the 19,000 and then you did the worksheet and they you did your liabilities you did your assets and it all came down to that you know what you had out there in liabilities which is stuff that it, you may own but it's not paid off was let's just say 20,000. So it what what it would basically say is that you're only going to be liable for $1,000 of that $19,000. Uh, you know, but you have to do the worksheet to figure everything out and you can see it right here. Uh, it's basically saying you're going to be at, at the bottom add up everything and you're going to see what you would be your amount of insolvency. And so even though you had uh, uh, assets, you had money in the bank and stuff like that, they're going to still allow you to write off from all of this stuff here, the current credit card debt, current mortgage stuff that you're paying on, any other judgments that you might have sitting out there, uh, any other things th that you're liable for, and then they're going to look at your assets, stuff that you have, you know, you need to put a fair market value. So don't think that your computer that you have that you paid uh, $3,000 for that you can go out and sell it for $3,000 because you can't. So you need to put what you think you would sell it for, even if that's $100, uh, your jewelry, all of that stuff. And you, you know, look at, they got all this stuff listed here and we know that you can't go out there and get the exact value for what you uh, own uh, when you sell it so you need to be reasonable here don't go overboard and um, and then you add up everything minus subtract and then you'll get that number and then what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to uh, go against what they're considering as income here and uh, if you're not able to do it you do need to sit down with a tax professional uh, to make sure that you do this the right way so uh, that'll do it for this video, 1099C debt cancellation uh, form and solvency worksheet with the IRS. Uh, that will do it for this video. Please like this video. Please share it with, with friends and family. 
we need it for the algorithm. We need you to like the video because that's going to help us be able to help other people. So you're actually doing your part by helping people find this video because this is a very important video, especially for right now, because people are getting these uh, 1099C uh, debt cancellation forms in the mail as of to, as of last week or this week or maybe you got it earlier in the month or other people are getting them earlier in the month if you need help with your credit please visit our website the credit repair shop.com if you need your credit reports and scores remember uh, on a previous video I showed where the original creditor placed in the comments that the that the debt was canceled and and so if you don't have your credit repair i mean your credit monitoring a paid one because it will not show up in the free ones on most of them it'll show up in the paid monitoring services you can go to the website your the number three scores dot com i'm putting it here on the screen here too and you can get your credit repair your credit reports and your scores from all three bureaus uh, again, please like the videos, please share, uh, get notified from new videos that pop up, uh, looking at the algorithm. I got a lot of subscribers, but I'm not getting a lot of people watching the videos when, uh, I post them and I really need to get that number up. I really appreciate you that are here watching it, that get notified. Uh, if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe to the channel also. Thanks a lot. Again, this is Stephen Williams, founder and president of the Credit Repair Shop.com. Thank you.